This is the first video I'm recording after returning from IBC 23. It was a really great show and we demonstrated Reactor 2.0. We are gonna have a lot of videos about that. I just can't keep myself back from showing it to you. It's so fundamental that I really need to get this across to you as quickly as I can. So there's gonna be a few videos coming out uh, real quick here that demonstrates the main points of Reactor 2.0 and then we'll dive into it in, in on a deeper level later. But first, uh, in this video, we'll be looking at a Rackfusion Live, one of our go-to controllers. It has uh, joysticks for PTC control, it has uh, encoder knobs, it has a fader. So it's essentially done for a uh, made for live switching and PTC control. So the panel is, uh, this is React, so this is the software that manages the panel. And usually what we would do so far, what you would do so far would be to add a device like your ATEM switcher. So let's just quickly do that. Uh, usually we can search for devices and ATEM switches will be discovered on the network. So it's really easy and quick. Configuring, connecting. Yes, we can also add other devices. And today I have a Panasonic UE150 camera. So we'll just search here UE150. Super nice camera from Panasonic here. And I am blessed with the knowledge of the IP address of that one. So I'll just type it in and we should see it connect real quick to this camera as well. Now over here in the camera selector, we would typically go and then say, okay, let's put that Panasonic camera on one of the, the camera select buttons. So we'll just do that. And now if we go to uh, the simulator, and the simulator is essentially showing us on the screen here. Ooh, that's a funny thing over there. Okay, sorry, uh, reboot. Yes, this is the simulator. It shows exactly what is on the panel. So you can see as I am pressing these buttons, it is responding the same on the screen, all right? This is gonna be useful because during this demonstration, I would rather show you the screen than the panel simply because it is much easier to record. Over here, uh, we have the camera selector for the camera. So I'll just select the UE150 and then I can move it with a joystick. It is. Yes, it is moving. And uh, on the navigation key over here, I can uh, cycle through a menu of various options. We can set like uh, the joystick sensitivity, autofocus, we can turn that on and off. We can uh, um, enable or adjust the pan speed, tilt speed and so on, iris settings, etc. All right, so this is the nature of a Skahoy controller normally. So, so far you guys have had as easy a time to set things up as I just show you. Just select your device and it's gonna populate the controller with a lot of presets that we have made. We call it default configurations. They have been, still are, very difficult to actually manage in themselves because it's like programming with a lot of automation inside. For instance, automatically putting that camera on that camera selector is something that requires some code behind the scenes. We did put stuff out here on the home screen. For instance, if you wanna manage the inputs to your ATEM switcher, there is like a nice table here where you can actually uh, drag them around. So what I just did was to basically swap input one and two on the ATEM. You can see it down here. So now we have input two and input one in that order. That was done on the home screen by just editing this called a constant set. I'm sorry for that name. It's a mapping table, okay? And um, th that's the configuration you, you have been able to do. The new thing, Reactor 2.0, is that inside the configuration tab, sorry, inside the configuration tab, we can go much further in terms of configuring this device. So what we do is we select the Rackfusion Live ATEM configuration I'm currently on, and now we have something called sections. And sections are selected portions of the controller where we can make ch uh, uh, changes. For instance, we have a section defined up here on the switching side of the Rec Fusion Live that gives us pages of, of settings for the ATEM switcher. Like, um, that was the home screen. Here we have auxiliary. So let's just center that a little bit. Okay, so here we have media player selections. Here we have macro execution, audio related settings. We have DVE. Apparently those pages are empty and we can add more as we want. We can also delete things that we don't want. We also have sections for the Panasonic camera and the user section, but I would like to show you what we can do up inside these sections. So for instance, the DVE and the audio, um, they don't have any content here because of the items which are associated. So I'll simply delete them. And hey, hey, by the way, the way we navigate these sections is over here. Let me just go into simulation mode and show you. Okay, so if I can zoom in just a slight bit, you can see as I'm pressing this buttons up, uh, wait, sides, I am basically cycling through those pages. You see down here, home, auxiliary, media, macro, I can do it down here in the navigation for my configuration, but actually it is a button on the panel. 
you see it right here as I'm pressing this one on the sides. It's a four way button. You can see I'm navigating. All right. So what would happen if we added a new page? Exactly. That would be really cool. My page. Because what happens is that this page is now empty and it is also added so that it becomes a part of the menu, right? And that means I can now go into this if I disable my simulation mode and then I can add stuff. Now, one of the cool things that I could show you is how to make like a um, directly, you know, cut to, to program bus. That's a very powerful demonstration. I just mark four, four buttons because I have an ATEM Mini. There are only four sources. So I'll just select program select and then I need to select the ME row which is ME1 because there's only one ME on in Atom Mini. And then I just select input one. So basically what we have right now is selection of, if, if I go here and I press this one, you see, it is the same thing that is applied to all four keys. But if I go to batch edit, I'm able to actually distinguish these. And we have a super cool feature called plus one. So if I place my cursor in the first field here for the button X1 and press plus one, I just increase that number from one to four and Bang. Notice that now I have these buttons made possible for two, three, four. Of course, there's um, duplicity with the buttons down here. And then again, there's not because these down here are actually selecting preview. So I just made a direct to program cut bus up here. OK, that was super easy, wasn't it? I think so. And if I go over here and I am changing, you see that it just became a part of the existing menu. So easy, so cool. Now, let's try the same for PDC control. So I go over here with my Panasonic camera. And by the way, it would be very useful. Yeah, just make sure that it's selected. The camera is selected that we want to do this for. But um, let's, let, let's navigate these just to see what is inside. I'm now cycling through by pressing the upper edge. Oh, you can, by the way, follow down here because the pages I'm taking you through are those five pages down here. They are the default sum that we have designed, given to you in the configuration out of the box so you can get started quickly. Your problem so far have been, it has been difficult for you to edit these, to, to change, to delete, to add. It's now easy, okay? so. I will go in here and then be able to basically cycle through these. Now, once again, I might either find an empty spot somewhere. OK, that would be an empty spot, actually. No, wait, let's just make a new page and um, see. Let me see. OK, we'll just make a page uh, random stuff, OK, because I don't have really a plan for what I want to put there. But I'm sure that you have if you get to do this yourself. Now, I will now uh, go in here, click. And once again, we have these one click behaviors over here. In this case, not likely to choose ATEM. We want to have PDC in this section. We'll just open up for the AWUE150. And then we have uh, four, uh, three options right here. I can tell you there'll be more options as time goes by. So this is still like a little bit unpolished in the sense that what you find in there is not a consistent curated list just yet. Oh, it is going to be expanded. But notice it's a, like a one click action. And then you have game control over here. Let's just try it. So and notice this happens for an encoder, right? So just adjust the gain of the camera. Awesome. Now click the next one. Uh, what do we want to put here? ND filters. All right. What is that now? It is a range of values we can go through either through which means no ND filter. And then we have apparently three ND filters we can enable. Wow. It's really easy, right? And then we go here and we could add pedestal as well, which in this case on this camera apparently is not a parameter that could be added. Some models, because we support all Panasonic models essentially, uh, they would have pedestal located a different place. So it's likely that pedestal here is for the generic Panasonic uh, range, like a UE70, um, and uh, it's not available on the UE150. Actually, we could try that. If we go to the home screen and we add a device, I know that I have a UE70 on the network. So we'll just add this one real quick. And there we go. Hopefully, we see this one connected. OK, so actually, there was another thing. Now, with our highly automated controllers, there's this um, little caveat that um, oh, I mean, it's of course a feature. But the thing is, if you click this one, we are currently communicating to. Um, oh, sorry, wait. On the home screen, we added the camera successfully. Sorry, I also need to add it over here in the camera selector. So essentially, over here, we have devices. Those are the things we are connected to. Whether or not we want to add those cameras to the camera selector is a matter of what we do over here, where we can you know, add them. We can even add them multiple times, which is 
Ah, it can be meaningful. Like, I mean, if you have like more than 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 six cameras, you might want to have the the same camera on button number one every time. That means you would add that same camera on position number one and position number six, and it would turn up on the same button, like that button on every single page of cameras you have. So that that's one thing I can think of that would justify having the same camera multiple times in the camera selection. Anyway, let's just remove it from set because it is going to confuse us slightly here. If I go back to the configuration, then um, you can see that we can basically change between these two cameras. All right, so the thing is, if I go to this camera, which is camera ID two, device number two, we have two Panasonic cameras. This is number one, this is number two. That's what device ID means. If I go back to configuration, then the parameters I just added up here, they are actually directly to the device that I picked, okay? So I, um, let me see, I pick this one, or I pick this one, or if I have this one, then I am basically dealing with that Panasonic camera. Actually, what I should do and could do is to, just group them by core and if I do that and I add like pedestal here then notice that the device ID uh, device index which is essentially the device ID as a variable which is managed by this will actually be um, be used as the device ID instead notice that what we did over here we, we hard coded it to number one so even though I change over to camera number two these three buttons would still adjust camera number one. That's not ideal. But you need to understand this, that there is like uh, identification numbers, ID numbers of the various devices you adjust. So if you have multiple of the same device like cameras, you're very likely to want to basically remove that so that it becomes the device index. And you can do that over here. So now I'm already a little bit into the advanced, but just notice that there's this distinction between targeting a specific device and targeting a group of devices that would be further specified by the device index that is chosen by a camera selector like this one. So as I'm going between these two, you can see that the device index must be changing because, oops, sorry, you can see that the gain values are different. I can change the gain values on this one, which was ID number two. And if I go to this one, we have ID number one. Okay, guys, this was how can you manage? How can you change, customize the settings that will be made available? And imagine if you are in a situation where you have like users, you don't want to tamper with things that are easily messing up your PTC camera, like white balance and so on. What you would do is, would be simply to go here and remove those pages you don't want them to access. That would be one way of handling it. Finally, I'm very excited about showing you the user section because the user section is something that is you know the whole controller on top you can override anything from top disregard everything underneath so let's just quickly summarize menu section was these buttons we have the panasonic vpc section that was these four buttons and finally the user section is your overlay on the very top this gets excited now because if i go in here and i press this plus button and i add my overlay page exclamation mark create now see what happens if i go to this oh that was not my intention <laughs> i created it transparently but let me try again overlay okay i'll just disable transparency because that kind of illustrates it better this is more like what companion would do because then you have like page page and as you go between these pages they're gonna block out okay so on the background page, you see everything underneath. That is actually a transparent layer. And if I go to the overlay page I just created, we are going to block out everything underneath. And sometimes that's useful, other times it's not. OK, let's see. What can we do on this overlay layer? Let me just find some random button we can have fun with over here. Let's try that. We will do a program select. Um, I'll just do it on one button because I want to show you something else cool, which is Program select on ME row number one, input number one. All right. And um, let me see what just happened there. I don't see anything, which I don't like. Oh, it's probably grouped by device core. Ah, OK, so let's fix this. If we go in here, you can see that the device index right here is currently set. So I think I'll just go up here and then I'll select device number one, which is my ATEM switcher. So because I'm not using device index for my ATEM switcher. So that's nice to just keep as device number one. It would only be if you had two ATEM switches connected that you would go in and change device ID to device index instead. Now, let's keep it at this level and then also let's disable this one so that we aim at specific devices, including the ID. The second thing I want to do and what I want to show you is adding a behavior. 
Okay, let me just make this a little bigger so you can see what's going on. Okay, uh, maybe, um, let me just do this once again. Just go back. I was basically clicking, uh, okay, now we're all right here. I clicked the add behavior, add behavior, and now I will select an additional behavior like auxiliary select. So now I'm not just doing one thing, which is to select, um, let's see, let's pick input number one as well. That feels a little bit consistent. We could add an alternative label here. We can also, yeah. Okay, so basically this button is gonna do two things on my ATEM switcher. And to verify this, let's just check the ATEM switcher quickly. We are camera three on the output. We are camera four on the program bus. And I just instructed this button to be a multi-behavior that selects program select and auxiliary select in a single keystroke. I can also put delays in between the two, but let's just try it, okay? So what I'll do is to open up your ability to see the ATEM switcher change. And then on my eight, on my Rack Fusion Live, I'm gonna push this button and you'll see two changes. You saw both the uh, output, which is the auxiliary on the ATEM Mini and also the program bus change by pressing that button. Let's just change that back again so that we can do the same in a moment because I wanna show you something. First of all, the button is black. What's up with that? That's because it's set to custom feedback, but in fact, you can pick your feedback from any of the actions you have added or the behaviors you have added. So do you want the feedback to come from the program select? Then that's what you do. And now you see in the display, we have nice labeling, just like on the simulator here on the left side. You can also choose this one, then you will have auxiliary. And if you pick the auxiliary feedback, then uh, you could have an alternative label, blah. So uh, you should actually see that inside here. Now it says blah. If we go up to feedback from program select and we add that, we could have selected a color. I mean, it's up to you. You can, you can choose whether you want the feedback to just come from one, one of those, or if you choose custom feedback, you can click this icon and then you can add stuff like my title, or you can add a text line. So multiple, Whoops, multiple, ah, what's up with that? Okay, my title, let's just try once again. Hello, okay, that was better. What about multiple? Maybe that was a keyword it couldn't manage. <laughs> That's strange, okay, <laughs> there might be bugs. Um, okay, we'll just keep it with hello, okay? So what about reloading? I'm getting suspicious. Okay, it says hello. Now, anyway, you get the point. If I am at custom feedback, I am able to basically turn on the button, select the color for it, which is independent of the two behaviors that are actually in this multi-behavior. The second thing I can do is also to put in a delay. So I could choose to say, when I press that button, I want to have a delay of a uh, thousand milliseconds for program select, and then I want to have another thousand milliseconds of, um, actually I think this is 500 milliseconds, which is generically for anything. And then down here I could put in a thousand milliseconds wait time before auxiliary select. So let's see if we can detect this. Going back to my panel, and we also need to see the ATEM software control and the auxiliary. So we should expect first to see the uh, program change and then the auxiliary change. So are you ready? Push, bang. Okay, so 500 milliseconds was the generic delay that was introduced here, but 1000 milliseconds was the delay between program select and auxiliary select. So that's basically what I said here. And that is multi-behaviors, guys. So the thing that you have still yet to see is how is it that we can get into our overlay because I now did something that um, you definitely need having navigation on the panel, right? So the background is everything underneath and all the changes that we have done inside the menu section and the PDC camera section. If I go to overlay, I need to enable this. So we need a navigation key. We just need to pick which button on the controller do we want to use for that. Could be this guy. Yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's use this guy. So um, on this button, uh, let me see. I want to put navigation. I want to make this go to page and I want it to go to the overlay page and uh, I can put in a label if I want. So this is actually quite nice. Let's just try this out. So let me see what happens if I click that button, it goes to the overlay page. Now on the overlay page, I need a way to get back. And basically you can go back by basically 
choosing go to page and then back to background. That would be the quickest, easiest way to make that key flip forth and back those two layers. I think you get it. Reactor 2.0 is really awesome, really cool, and I can't wait to hear what you think about it. And also, I can't wait to to have all the final details in place to optimize workflows, to add more one-click behaviors. But most important, importantly, let us know, guys, what you feel about this. For us, this has been the missing piece between the easy home screen and the advanced configuration with the tree. That is this section view, which has now finally come.